The flimsy holy grail of climate technology is nuclear fusion. It would produce almost infinite amounts of clean energy without producing any radioactive waste that would need to be controlled as a byproduct. Is it possible? What will it take to use it in our daily lifestyle? Watch this video to the end to get all the answers. Hello, and welcome back to INO6, where we discuss everything about innovation, construction, and future civilization. In today's video, we'll discuss what is nuclear fusion helion. So, without wasting time, Let's get started. Sam Altman, a well-known figure in Silicon Valley, has never placed a bet this big. The recently made $375 million investment in Helion Energy was described as Altman's biggest investment ever. It's a portion of a larger $500 million roundup that the startup will spend to finish building a fusion facility close to its Washington headquarters. From 2014 until 2019, Altman served as the head of the Silicon Valley startup accelerator company Y Combinator. He is currently the CEO of OpenAI, a company he co-founded with Elon Musk and others to do artificial intelligence research. The idea that the government should provide every person with a minimum living wage in order to make up for technological disruptions that render some employment obsolete, which Altman has also been a strong supporter of. Artificial intelligence and energy were at the top of Altman's list of technologies he wished to explore in the past. Altman visited four fusion startups and invested $9.5 million in Helion in 2015. 15 as his first investment. Sam says, Helion's founders immediately struck me as the greatest and their technical approach was by far the best. Now moving on to the main character of this movie, what Helion actually does. The opposite of nuclear fission is nuclear fusion. In contrast to fission, which involves splitting a heavier atom into two lighter ones to release energy, fusion involves the collision of two lighter nuclei to create a heavier atom. The sun generates energy this way, and hydrogen bombs are built on this principle. Helion is one of few startups, along with Commonwealth Fusion Systems and TAE Technologies, attempting to manage and market fusion as a source of energy. According to David Kirtley, co-founder and CEO of Helion, the company does not use a tokamak. Helion is constructing a long, slender fusion device. Helion uses pulsed magnetic fusion. That indicates that the business compresses its fuel using aluminum magnets before expanding it to produce direct current electricity. The sensitive plasma state of matter, where electrons are isolated from nuclei and where fusion can occur, must be created and maintained at extremely high temperatures. Helion declared in June that Trenta, a prototype for its sixth fusion generator, reached a temperature of 100 million degrees Celsius. Curly compares Helion's fusion device to a diesel engine while comparing more traditional technologies to a bonfire. To create heat with a campfire, you stoke the flames. In a diesel engine, the fuel is compressed and heated after being injected into a container until it starts to burn. He says, we can advance quickly if we combine this new, fresh approach with some of the old physics. The systems wind up being much smaller and much faster to iterate. And that gets us to commercially usable electricity, which is solving the problem of climate change as quickly as feasible. According to Brett Rample, the director of nuclear innovation at the nonprofit Clean Air Task Force, Helion Energy uses anutronic fusion, which means they don't have a lot of high energy neutrons present in their fusion reaction. Anutronic fusion still has some unanswered questions, according to Rampal. Anutronic techniques, like the one Helion Energy is exploring, may have advantages that other systems do not, but they may also have disadvantages and difficulties in producing fusion energy commercially. Overall, though, Rampal thinks that the business will benefit from the surge of fusion-related investment and innovation that has occurred over the past two decades. The fusion business should be focused on analyzing the advantages and cons of various technologies at this time, according to Rampal, who told CNBC that there is still much that has to be shown for true commercial fusion techniques. The three-part utopian vision of Altman. Fusion fits into Altman's larger vision of boosting plenty through technology advancement which sets it different from the perspectives of many financiers and thinkers in the field of climate change. First of all, Altman thinks that this is our greatest shot to get out of the climate catastrophe. More generally, he considers it as one of the finest ways to improve people's quality of life by reducing the cost of energy. The link is really a 
enormous there. These three elements make up Altman's idealistic world. According to Altman, artificial intelligence will lower prices for products and services by boosting productivity exponentially. To cover people's costs of living during the transitional phase when many jobs are lost, universal basic income will be required. The third aspect of Altman's ideal future is almost endless, inexpensive, green technology. Therefore, he believes that fusion, as a road to plentiful energy, is sort of the other part of the equation to get to the abundance, for the same reason he is so interested in AI. Allman says the two limiting commodities you see now in the world are energy and intellect, which they're trying to work on with AI, and Helion is doing the most interesting thing in the world right now for energy. Altman is aware that fusion has been elusive for a long time. He sarcastically says that fusion has been 50 years away. The seemingly impossible time periods to commercialize fusion similarly appalled Kirtley. He became interested in fusion and spent a few years learning about it. He collaborated on space propulsion research with NASA, the Air Force, and the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency to enable people to reach Mars and other planets. However, However, Curley was put off by the thought of fusing modern technologies with imminent fusion. In 2013, Curley co-founded Helion with Chris Phil, John Slow, and George Votrebeck. They were able to illustrate that there are truly new methods for fusion. These techniques take modern technology, electronics, fiber optics, and computers that hasn't been applied to the fusion business as a whole. The funds from the round disclosed on Friday will be used to complete Polaris's development. Helion broke ground on this seventh generation fusion reactor in July and it plans to utilize it to demonstrate net energy production in 2024. Reid Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn, and Dustin Moskowitz, a co-founder of Facebook, are two other investors in Helion. Moskowitz took part once more in the financing round on Friday. For Curtly, as it is for so many others, the mission is personal. Is Helion a breakthrough in linear fusion? A completely new technology called a linear fusion reactor is being developed by Helion. It may be installed at a modular scale of 50 to 200 million watts of electric capacity and circumvent many of the drawbacks of Tokamax, the largest fundraise for a private fusion firm to date totaling $2.2 billion. Many fusion reactor designs attempt to address technical complexity by increasing engineering complexity, which is a self-defeating strategy. This is possible, but it automatically increases the expense of the architecture, with mature reactors expected to deliver power for more than 15 charge per kilowatt hour. Helion has developed a fusion reactor using a different strategy. The list below includes includes our top 10 features. You can tell how different this is from the initial fusion report by going back and reading it. Costs. According to Helion, the reactor will be 1,000 times smaller and 500 times less expensive than a traditional fusion reactor, with final costs projected to be one to six charge per kilowatt hour. In fact, this would revolutionize the use of zero carbon electricity. The linear reactor, this apparatus is not a stellarator, tokamak, or inertial confinement device. Pulsed magnetic fields accelerate plasma into a burn chamber at 1 million miles per hour in this straightforward linear arrangement. Plasma particles that collide fuse. The plasma expands as a result of the fusion. Following that, energy is extracted from the expanding plasma. It's comparable to a diesel engine fuel. Direct generation of electricity. Heat production is how most power generators operate. Water becomes high pressure steam due to heat, which subsequently powers a turbine. Faraday's law, which states that a moving magnetic field causes a current in a rotating object's state coils produces electricity within the turbine. However, a linear reactor can directly use Faraday's law. Electromagnetically charged plasma particles exist. As a result, they will likewise cause a current as they expand, according to some online sources, compared to circa 40% in a normal turbine. 95% of the energy emitted from the plasmas might be transformed into electricity. Beta. A fusion reactor needs to be optimized in order to function in an energy-efficient manner. The plasma field energy to magnetic field energy used for confinement is measured as beta. The patents held by Helion describe a field-reversed magnet configuration that has the highest betas of any plasma confining device to compress and accelerate the plasmids into a, a radially converging magnetic field. A series of field coils with progressively smaller radii are activated. While tokamaks normally attain closer to 5%, Helion is aiming for a beta of nearly 100%. Capital. Helion secured a $2.2 billion series E fundraising round in November 2021. The amount raised for private fusion is the biggest ever. A $500 million upfront investment and an additional $1.7 billion linked to the performance benchmarks make up the basis of this deal. So far, so good. Helion was the first privately owned fusion business to heat fusion plasma to 100 million Celsius in 2021. One MS of sustained plasma
plasma has passed. With magnetic fields greater than 10 Teslas, it has contained them. Over the course of 16 months, the Trenta prototype has completed over 10,000 high power pulses while operating almost every day, a plan for commercial success. By 2024, Helion plans to create a seventh prototype reactor called Polaris that will provide a net increase in electricity. It's been stated that fully commercial reactors may be ready in 2029-2030. That's it for today. Hope you liked the video. Share it if you did. Like and comment on the video that you want to see next on our channel and subscribe to see our future videos. We'll see you in the next video. Till then, keep watching.